Hi, this is Donovan Schmidt, Joshua Flores, Noah Castillo, and Jennifer Tun Medina. And this is our final for Chicano Studies 101 class. Our topic was about education during the Chicano movement. During the Chicano movement, a lot of events occurred that caused a lot of stress and animosity towards Anglo America. A big issue during this time was the lack of education and the opportunities for minorities. Due to all the conflicts, the Latino community came together to create better organizations to make not only their lives better, but the younger generation of Latinos' lives better. Some of these organizations were the Brown Bretts, Mexican American Youth Organization, United Mexican American Organization, Movimiento de Estudiantes Chicano de Asla, and the Mexican American Legal Defense and Education Fund. Hope you guys enjoy this. United Mexican American Students, UMass, and Movimiento Estudiantel Chicano de Aslan may have been developed at different times, but still stood for the same purpose, to promote the furthering of Chicano education, culture, and history. They are one of the reasons we have this class today. They also stood for the overall advancement of political consciousness in Chicano student activists, also uniting some of the more loosely developed organizations to one structure. They felt as a Mecca was the means to an end, and this was clearly said in El Plan de Santa Barbara, which is a plan of higher education. They said, Mecca must bring to the mind of every young Chicana and Chicano that the liberation of their people from prejudice and oppression is in their hands, and this responsibility is greater than personal achievement and more meaningful than degrees, especially if they are earned at the expense of their identity and their cultural integrity. Mecca is more, than, is more than a name. It is a spirit of unity, of sisterhood and brotherhood, and a resolve to undertake a struggle for liberation in society, where justice is but a word. Mecca is the means to an end. Following came the East Los Angeles walkouts. In 1968, protests by Chicano students and teachers began because of unfair and unequal conditions of Los Angeles Unified School District high schools, which stemmed from high minority death rate in Vietnam during this time. The dropout rate was at 60%, even if students graduated most at an 8th grade reading level. And due to an Anglo-centric eternal school, most Chicanos were put in vocational training or classes fielded for the mentally disabled. And with all this going on, animosity between the students and teachers caused for a hostile work environment. Even with Julian now elected the first Latino to serve in the district problems weren't changed and led to the first calling of action. The original leader of the walkouts was Moctezuma Esparza. He worked alongside teacher Sal Castro since 1965. And between the two of them, they organized hundreds of students to walk out of schools in 1968. There was 15,000 students total, and the first walkout started March 1st, 1968, and the last was March 8th, 1968. A couple days before the last march, two students were reportedly beaten by police. Finally is the Mexican American Youth Organization, which was an organization that fought for the rights of Latinos in the United States. The organization was created in the year of 1967 in San Antonio, Texas. The founders of this group consisted of Willie Velasquez, Mario Copen, Ignacio Perez, Juan Palin, and the leader, Jose Angel Gutierrez. They then led to the Raza Unida Party, which was a political party that fought for equality within the United States. San Antonio's Mexican population counted for 40% of the general population, which were powerless and impoverished. All five of the founders were graduates or undergraduates from St. Mary's Liberal Arts there in San Antonio. The biggest problems faced in San Antonio was voter registration. Most of the population were young Me Mexican Americans, which seemed no point in trying to register because of the let's fight mentality. But even with this in, in the way, Willie Velasquez was given the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Bill Clinton for his work on voter registration. He did, he did well getting voters in rural areas, but not as much in the metropolitan areas due to the fact of propaganda within the city. Walkouts were started during this time period. 18 were done total in San Antonio. These helped Mexican Americans to take seats in the school board system. Several high schools were affected during this time. Crystal City, Edgewood, and Lanning. Raza Unida then came into full effect with, with a wish put the group on a pillar within the state of Texas, whom then created the Organizational League of United Latin American Citizens. Then the Brown Berets, a pro-Chicano organization that emerged during the Chicano movement in the late 1960s and remains active to present day. The group was seen as part of the third movement for liberation. The Brown Berets' focus was to 
would turn all United States territory once held by Mexico to Mexico. Their agenda was to fight police harassment, inadequate public schools, inadequate health care, inadequate job opportunities, minority education issues, and the lack of political representation. The organization's name was then changed to Young Chicanos for Community Action, or YCCA, in September of 1967, Sal Castro, a Korean War veteran and teacher at Lincoln High School met with the YCCA at the Piranha Coffee House. The group decided to wear brown berets as a symbol of unity and resistance against discrimination. As a result of the organization gained the name Brown Berets, it set up its branches by 1968 in Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, New York, Florida, Chicago, St. Louis, and other metropolitan areas with large Raza populations. Also in 1970, the Brown Berets, the Epsilon, and other community activist organizations took over a piece of land in Logan Heights, a community of San Diego, because the city of San Diego wanted to build a California Highway Patrol substation, and the community didn't want that. The little piece of land under Coronado Bridge marked by Chicano graffiti art on the first bridge pillars is now called Chicano Park. Finally, the Mexican American Legal Defense and Education Fund. This organization promoted Latino civil rights and helped more Mexican American students get a better education for better opportunities. This organization was created in 1968 by Mario Oblero and continues to be around in modern day today. Their headquarters are located in Los Angeles, California, and San Antonio, Chicago, and in Washington, DC. This organization was around everywhere where they were needed, mainly around in Texas and California at the time in 1968. This organization was created to promote social change through communications and community education. This organization strives to implement programs that are structured to bring Latinos into the mainstream of American political and social economic life by providing better educational opportunities, also encouraging participation of Latinos in society to offer a better vision for the future. Thanks to this organization, school doors have opened not only to Latinos, but to all students equally.